Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and this is my Super 8 camera project that you've seen on this channel a while ago. A lot of people asked, can you turn this into a kit? Could you make this a commercial product? So everybody could use this on an old Super 8 camera, especially filmmakers. And the answer is, this is just a proof of concept, a very crude one, but it works. But in today's episode, I would like to turn this from a proof of concept into a prototype that may get to a commercial product one day. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So where we have ended up last time is this cartridge insert that fits in this camera but not every camera, because not all of them load from the back and a lot of them have to have the hatch closed to even work at all. So what we want to do is convert this bulky thing <laughs> with off-the-shelf components into a custom unit that has actually the exact same size than a regular Super 8 cartridge and fulfills the same purpose. These Super 8 cartridges have a lot of notches along the side and these tell the camera what type of film is inserted, the ISO level, brightness, all of that. But what we need to do is make sure that we don't interfere with the camera. We get just a raw picture and we process that on our own because a digital sensor can do a little more than uh, a film cartridge. But we have to comply to all the standards, to all the notches to make sure it's perfectly aligned. The biggest challenge that we had with the last project Making that aligned is no easy task. Everything has to fit inside this little cartridge and that is smaller than a usual Raspberry Pi by quite a lot. Also, we have to put the power supply in there, uh, the power source, of course, controls, a lot of stuff to fit into a tiny cartridge. And the other thing is that all the cameras that I found that might fit the bill have two large PCBs, so they won't fit on this plane. So we have to be kind of creative to make everything fit inside a cartridge. The brains of our project this time is the Compute Module 4, the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 that it is. I need to have a specific version. I need Wi-Fi on there and I need it to have enough storage space and enough RAM. So the only one with Wi-Fi that I could get is one that has included eMMC. At first I thought that is going to be more difficult than having the light version that uses an SD card. But actually it's not that difficult at all. You just have to work a bit differently with it. So that means I need to build a custom carrier board for it that allows me to interface with the compute module, make it as thin and flat as possible build a solution to make the camera sensor kind of fit in there, maybe putting it at 90 degrees and using a system of mirrors and prisms of some sort to get the picture inside the cartridge. And we have to have uh, power, charging capabilities and interface capabilities. A lot of stuff to tackle in one project. Let's see how far we can get. Usually on this kind of project with electronics, you start with the electronics, then decide how big the PCB is going to be and then build a case around it. Right? In this case wrong, because we have to make it fit exactly to the size and shape of a Super 8 cartridge. And I even got a second Super 8 camera. And this one is actually a lot better than the other one that I had. It has a really good lens and this is really worth converting to make films. And also, it has a little bit more tricky challenges that are more akin to other Super 8s on the market because there are some interface pins in there that the cartridge has to comply to that the Canon one from the last video didn't have. So I want to make sure that our end product would fit in any Super 8 camera that has ever been built. So this time we start with the shape of the cartridge. I've drawn that up in FreeCAD and I've made like a little analogous stuff that I've 3D printed and marked the positions. And with impressioning inside the cartridge port, I referenced all the sizes, made sure that I get the tolerances for the cartridge right. So I'm sure that all the things line up to the places where they should and the cartridge doesn't hang 
on certain spots when they get inserted because some of these uh, cameras have retainer pins in them and make sure that the cartridge doesn't move while it's filming or while you shake around the camera. While I made the physical design of my project, I've also designed the PCB. So I've 3D printed that to make sure it will fit inside and I've also printed out all the circuitry so I know how that will interface in the real world. Yeah, that was quite some design work. Let's check it out. Welcome to my computer. Here is the 3D model for our design. I've drawn it up in FreeCAD and we start by looking at it. So this is everything that goes inside the box. So that represents pretty much a cartridge. Here are the interface notches that are really important that they are perfectly to size. And if we look inside here, we can see a little prism. And that prism is used to reflect the picture up into the camera module. And that is the Raspberry Pi HQ camera because the sensor of that camera has approximately the right size for Super 8 film replacement, approximately. It's not correctly, you will get a bit of a crop, but you can make that happen. And the thing is, the beam gets in here, will be reflected up to the camera with this prism inside. So this is where the picture is actually taken. And we have to account for the difference of distance between this piece and the front of the unit. So that means that the focus that you see through the viewfinder of the camera is not the real focus. You will have to use an electronic viewfinder, mainly your phone that streams the picture from the camera inside to your phone. And that is what you use to focus. Keep that in mind. And of course, this has to be mounted with a 3D printed prism mount. It also holds the PCB for the camera that is on there. Here in this little cavity is room for the battery, for a LiPo battery. Um, it's barely enough room to fit a 1050 milliamp hour LiPo. I've also tested a 2000 one, but then I get interference problems down here. And then on top of that goes the PCB. And I have actually used FreeCAD to determine the shape of it and then exported that to KiCad and then built all the electronics around it. See, here are some parts. That is the charging uh, part and here's a little cutout for a USB-C check that is used for charging and for communication so that is where you download the files either over USB or over Wi-Fi and this cutout is necessary so we can nest the <laughs> connector for the ribbon cable for the camera in there to make it just a smidge smaller and on top of that there will be the compute module and all in all it will fit inside I have margin of about 0.1 millimeter. So probably I will have n quite not enough space by 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters. So it really has to squeeze tightly in there. And also these walls are so thin, I can't really print them with FDM. I have to do that in resin and normal resin is not really up to the task. So we have to get creative <laughs> also on that end. If you would like to play around with the files, 3D print them yourself or play around with the code, you can download all the files for free at element14.com, linked below under this video. Check them out. Okay, and here we have KiCad. This is the nightly version. I have to use that because I can only get the files for the compute module on the latest revision. So keep in mind, if you want to open the files that we provide on element14.com, you need to open that with the nightly of KiCad, 5.99 at the time of recording this video. So we have, these are the main connectors of the compute module. Both have 100 pins. This is the camera connector represented here. We only need a few lines for that one, power ground and like, and also serial clock and serial data to have proper communications with the camera. Then we have a USB-C port over here. We have push buttons. One is uh, the run button to make it boot up when it's in a shutdown state. And the other one is just connected to a GPIO. And that is a function that we do in software to make it shut down when we press the button safely. And here is a little uh, circuit that I've used plenty of times. That is a charging and uh, battery protection circuit for LiPo cells. 
And that basically is it. The hardest part is to get that into a usable shape for <laughs> the Super 8 project to make everything fit. As you see, it's pretty uh, tight routing over here. We have to be very careful when soldering these 100 pins. We will do that in the reflow oven. And when we look at it in 3D, we see how it will look. Pretty cool. Yeah, let's send this PCB off to Isla and get it manufactured. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. The 3D design was quite intricate on this project and I need to make sure that everything aligns perfectly and you know what? Filament 3D printing is not gonna cut it. First because I need pretty thin walls, I need this to be very sturdy, I need it to be heat resistant because yes the Raspberry Pi exerts some heat while it's running, it can easily get over 50 degrees in a confined space inside a camera that was not built to have something hot in it you need to make sure that the cartridge will hold up. So I refer to resin printing. And you know what? Resin prints don't hold up to much force. They are pretty brittle, as these nice slow-mo shots show you. But there's a special resin that doesn't have that problem. And you can't buy it yet because it's mine. With such a space-constrained project, assembly is pretty difficult. We have to put everything in our special 3D printed case, one of a kind, with a special resin. Kind of proud of that. And we have to fit the LiPo in there, the Raspberry Pi HQ camera, the PCB, Raspberry Pi compute module, uh, the power supply, like everything in there, and make it fit in the tiny slot of every camera. And it's pretty fiddly to put together. I'm very thankful that I thought about putting headers on everything so I can put that again after the fact. Even with the tiny ribbon cable that was pretty challenging but doable. But yeah, we've got everything together. Time to find out if that actually fits inside the camera. As you've seen it fits but barely. It's like it's you have to squeeze it in but then it is aligned everything fits in there tightly, so that's a great success. But on the functional side, we have a bit of a problem. Okay, now it's time for the software, and I'm not going to uh, reinvent the wheel for that one. Uh, we'll keep that for the final product. So first we do hardware, then we do software. So what I want to have it to be completely independent from local networks. So it should provide its own access point. And the easiest way to do, in my opinion, is just install RaspApp or RaspAP, which creates an access point out of your Raspberry Pi. You can pretty much easily create a router with that one. So you install that one, your Raspberry Pi will get a fixed IP address and it will provide an access point that you can log into. And also I'm using the RPI Cam web interface by Silvan Melchior. This is on GitHub available. Uh, I used that before on the Super 8 build version 1. Both work pretty great together. So you install both of them and when you access the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, it will default to showing you the Cam web interface. And if you type the same IP address and the right port that you have configured in, in Raspberry Pi, you can change the settings. And to make everything shut down safely, I've also included a shutdown.py script. This is written in Python 3. It's basically the same like you have seen countless times before. We wait on a button push that is connected to an interrupt. And when that is pushed, we debounce it with one second. So we don't have accidental 
uh, shutdowns and then just print shutting down and do it. And that safely shuts down the pack. Of course, we have to make all these executable on boot. So we use a cron tab for that. Edit the cron tab to run the shutdown script. The other two scripts by default run on boot. I would love to show you some footage from inside the camera and footage working, but the trouble is I have browning out issues. So thing is that I can boot it. I need to like kickstart it with another USB-C cable uh, at the PowerBoost 1000 that I put in there just to double up the capacity that my power supply could hold. And that is just enough to make it boot. It's enough to give me the access to the web server in there, I can connect to it. But when I want to access the actual camera, the unit browns out. So it shuts down because it doesn't have enough power. I need the, the kickstarting just because while booting, the Raspberry Pi needs a little more current than under idle load. So that is why it worked this time. But I can only show you like recorded footage from inside the camera when it's running inside the camera. And there's the problem when I need to connect to it to record something, it browns out. So we have made a major step by converting it to, into like this tiny package and make it fit into the camera. All the functions are there, but what we now have to do, and that's too much for today. So we have to put that in another episode is design our own tiny, but very powerful custom switching power supply solution and maybe a cooling solution for this one. So check out <laughs> the comparison. It's exactly the same. It fits barely inside, like it's about a tenth of a millimeter proud here. We have to shave that down again. So goal number one, making it into a cartridge format achieved. Goal number two, that needs your help. I need your input and your expertise on the Element 14 community. Do you have any ideas for a power supply that is small enough to fit inside like a tiny little space? It can't be any bigger than the Adafruit PowerBoost 1000, but it has to deliver like three times the current. Let me know. In a future episode, we're probably going to design a custom power supply for this one and finally turn this into something that you out there and the filmmakers out there could get to breathe new life into old cameras. We are one step closer to a commercial Super 8 cartridge in a digital format. Complete redesign, but there is still some work to do and I need your input. Do you know something about switching power supplies? Have you got ideas how to make them smaller and how we could construct one that delivers enough current to run the Raspberry Pi compute model at full force? Let me know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me, but be sure that we will come back to this one and finish it up for good.